Hello, everybody. I believe we're live. Hi. Hello, Maria Batista from Key Largo, Florida. And we have Mary Corner from. I'm not sure Mary just says Mary. We have a bunch of different people. Guys, so um, it is 2.01, and again, I want to say thank you for spending your Saturday with me here at another webinar, Airbnb webinars. And um, today, I am happy to inform that Elle Callahan. Oh, you know, Elle, I never know how to pronounce your name. <laughs> That's okay. How do you pronounce your last name? Callanan. Callanan. Yeah. Ellen and I have been talking for over a week about this webinar, guys and ladies, and and I never I forgot to ask her how do I pronounce your last name. English is not my first language, and that's my excuse of bad pronunciations. So, um, dear host, I have Elle here with us, and we're happy to, you know, be here another Saturday, and thank you so much for taking your time. I really value that you've chosen to spend a little bit of time with us here. One more time, our official disclaimer is, this is not an Airbnb sponsor event. We will talk about Airbnb, we will, you know, talk about hosting and all of that. They do know we exist. They do know I'm doing monthly webinars, but they are not sponsoring this webinar. This webinar is sponsored by me. <laughs> um, so I know people are just coming in a little bit, and I'm going to tell you just um, I've met Elle about, I think it's been like 30 years, right, or, or has it been longer? I think that's right. I think it's been a really nice long time, three years, I think so. Yeah, and, you know, we um, talked and we met, and she's always been amazing to her. She always looks so good. <laughs> I have been in her presence when a stranger came up to her and asked her for a photo for what she was wearing. <laughs> that, that, I forgot that, about that. that was random. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. We were in New York. We actually at a at a, a luncheon with the new Airbnb marketing person, and we walk out, and and she's looking amazing like always. And someone comes and says, "Can I take this photo?" <laughs> that is like I remember that very clearly because it was like you know you in South Hall, and and people asking you for your photo. So yes, <laughs> I'm just rambling on, giving people a little bit of time. We have about 24 attendees right now, from Georgia to. I'm missing my Jason. Jason is always making fun of me. He's like always saying that I am um, drinking water. <laughs> and in honor of Jason, who's not on our list yet, um, here's my water break. I'm gonna do the same thing. We're such healthy girls. Yeah, For that's all of you, that everybody is, out there who doesn't have a glass of water, you could take one minute and go get a glass of water to share with us. Yeah, exactly. It's it's not us just drinking water because we're talking too much. Um, so guys, um, he are, we are again, hi Alexina and Maria Batista and Karen and you know, I thank you. Uh, can you see anything? Just black here. Uh, Nayad, can you see us now? Hello? Can you? Can you see Elle? <laughs> I'm trying to see what others are saying on the chat to see if they could see and hear us. It's, you know, technology. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, so amazing. it's so amazing, and oh, what I'm seeing is, oh. I see you and I hear you very well. I don't see you buffering. Okay, we're on. I have a little, I have a, uh, an iPad next to me so that it shows me what people are seeing. All right, so here we are with Elle, and I'm going to share the screen of our deck that, we, that she prepared so lovingly. And here we are. Ta da! Help. And help. Hello! There it is. Yes. There you go. Okay, great. And I'm, I'm reading the sidebar, and it says that for most people, the sound and video is working well. Good. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so should we get started? Should we give another moment? What do you think? No, go ahead. Okay. 
Um, well, I just wanted to say thank you to you, Evelyn, for bringing me on board to this beautiful platform you've put together for all of us as Airbnb hosts. Um, I've been following you for a while and really just appreciate how much value you bring. Um, no matter how long any of us have been hosts, it's so important for us to get new information and um, you know really connect with each other to support each other because this can be hard work. And um, thank you to everybody out there who's joining us in whatever time zone you're in. Um, it's really our pleasure and privilege to have you with us. So thank you for that. Um, I wanted to just give you a brief background on me. Some of it was in the mail out that went out about this webinar. But for those of you who might not know, um, I've been a merchandiser and an interior decorator for um, over 10 years. And that's given me a really amazing opportunity to work in both retail settings and sell product by being, you know, making things look beautiful, as well as working in private homes and offices, making those look beautiful and function better. So I've been a host for about four years. Um, Evelyn's got me beat. She's been a host a little longer. And um, it's been my, my joy to have a couple different listings, um, country and city and get people from all over the world. Um, so for those of you who are really new and those of us who are you know, pretty, pretty veteran at this, um, I'm going to share out as much as I can today in our amount of time together. And hopefully we can make our spaces more beautiful and really resonate even more with us. Um, in addition to being a, an interior decorator, I'm also a life coach, which is a pretty relatively new undertaking for me. Um, and what I do is take spaces and match them up with what the lifestyle you want. And we make it function for you in whatever way you need it to. So if you're a parent or you have a really full-time job and then a part-time job in addition, um, if you're an Airbnb host but you want more joy in your life because this is starting to really get traction, um, I help with that. So I feel like I'm bringing as much as I can to the table for you and I'm very open to questions in the sidebar so we'll try to fit those in if we can. Um, the first thing I wanted to do, and it's certainly in the life coach vein, but it definitely applies to Airbnb hosting, is to take a moment to ask each of you to pick either your favorite listing or maybe you only have one, which is fine, and choose the word that resonates most with you about how it looks and feels right now. So we're going to sort of an evoking feeling. And what we're thinking about is if we're sitting in the space or we're resting on that bed or we're checking in as if we were the guest, what would the feeling be, the number one word that we feel in that space currently? And then if you're open to it, drop it into the sidebar and I'll mention a couple of them um, as we go. So let's just take a moment and uh, think of a special word, a theme word. And um, Elle, for me, I you know, I have the, um, my word for, for my home, what I like to, for, you know, I'm, I'm trying to look at the chat, and of course the chat one more time is giving me a hassle. <laughs> um, we'll come back to it. We'll give everybody a minute. Um, for me, my home, what I love to, to evoke is a feeling of comfort and, and homing. Um, yeah, so that when people that. come in, that they want to be here and be comfortable, I'm in New York City, and the city is such a energy sucker. <laughs> it just yeah. sucks your energy. You you're always vibrating when you're in Manhattan. It's sort of like you're like uh, buzzing. So mm -hmm. I'd love to have that that feeling of comfortable. And now we we seen a few people clean, cozy. Maria Batista, George says relax. John says retreat. Oh. Um, Karen says peaceful. Emily says bright, and Ellen says Helen says spacious. Um, those are great words, guys. What about yeah, you? Great that? word. I, I'm so delighted to hear that everybody has such a positive um, interpretation of their space because it's so often that, at least as I was an early host, and I can only speak to this myself, I would come into my space and think, oh no, it doesn't have enough stuff or it doesn't translate what I'm trying to say to my, to my guests. And then after you spend some time in that space or you make it a little more updated, it really becomes all of these words, happy and safe and comfortable. I love that it's, um, Marco says sunny. You know, it's really nice to play on those words. So the second part of what I wanted to bring just to this beginning uh, 
um, time together is if you feel that you have this very positive word now, is there another word or perhaps a greater manifestation of that word that you'd like to bring into that space? So the second question is, if you put yourself in the room that you think is sunny or um, that it's vibrant or you love the color, when you mentally sit in that space, is there a way to ramp that up and make it even more committed to that word? Is there one thing that comes into mind that might allow you to see that better or experience it better and then translate that to your guest? So for me, I'll give an example. <laughs> um, would be I have a really lovely um, space that's uh, a full little house and I had thought it needed to be very bright and spacious and everything and it was that but it was becoming very sparse looking um, because it's a little sizable and so what I started doing instead of getting more furniture and more bulk I started adding in plants and that really changed the space significantly it made it lively it made it energetic um, I felt like it brought nature inside in a way that was kind of calling for that. So I'm curious to see if there's anything that, that you guys would say, like, I should add more plants, or maybe I can take away the curtains because it's blocking the great view, or whatever it might be. And we'll just take a second and see if you pop in anything on the sidebar for that as well. Yeah, and with that in mind, um, and, and that's such a great thing, because it's like, I know I have certain parts of the house that are a little darker than others, Mm. And um, I mean, like my down, my space, my personal space, because it's sort of um, in New York City, the the house is, or at least my home, the, the basement. It's my living space. It's part of my living space, and it's a little darker because it's sort of like it's inside, and even though it has windows, they don't get excuse me all the beautiful sun and brightness of the rest of the house. Mm. Um, so I have what I've done is just create very sheer curtains in front of it, so they still have a little bit of blocking people from looking inside, but I still yeah. can't. That's great. That, that's great. It's, it's challenging when we have um, natural lighting issues, which is really common in our, our city settings. Yeah. Um, one thing that I would say is if you can, and if you can afford it, or you can come across them or do a swap with someone, um, get mirrors. Try to add one or two more mirrors and put them on opposing walls so that they're catching the light that's filtering in through those shears, which is a great idea. Um, oh, that's a great idea. Thank you. Um, and then you're bouncing light back and forth and back and forth. And I think that really creates a nice energetic sort of feng shui to the space anyway. Um, plus, I'm, I was going to mention this later, but I'll mention it now being that we're on mirrors. If you don't already have a full length mirror in your listing space, if, whether it's your home or it's an extra apartment or whatever your, your space is, get one if you can. Um, even if it's one of those kind of cheaper ones that we find at Target um, that we all had in our bedrooms as, you know, 12-year-olds or whatever, um, because it really ends up serving the guests well. And I've heard that from a number of, of hosts that they've heard that from their guests. Because mm -hmm. uh, we're not always thinking about that. We're not the one getting dressed in there so often. So. Oh, totally. And, and, you know, one of the things I actually got in reference to the mirror was I got a little, um, those makeup mirrors. Mm hmm Yeah. Because, you know, I, I'm not a person that wears a lot of makeup or anything like that, but, you know... Well, you look fabulous today. <laughs> I make sure that I have to look half decent for my... for, for, the, pe for the peeps. But, yeah, you know, and, and it's, it's kind of funny. They do use them. People, you know, the women tend to use the, the little... And I wanted to get one with lights, and I did. But, you know, just like a little mirror, an extra mirror for them. Because it's not about us. It's really not about the host. It's about the guests. Yes. Um, so yes. we have some comments here, and um, I would like to add light. It says, um, and it, yeah, she, somebody, uh, Sue said that I have a full-length mirror, and it truly really changed the room. I love that. And, and I love that there's a couple of responses that are excited about getting a full-length mirror. Yay, Christy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I see real flowers and plants um, replacing silks. That's a great idea, Susan. And um, let's see. Oh, my casita looks out over a canyon, and I have an inviting landscape. Ooh, Christy, oh. you're so lucky. <laughs> I, I think we're going to have to do this on the road. 
-hmm. You know what I mean? Like a webinars on the road and visit all of you guys hosting, you know, listings and say like, okay, this week we're featuring La Casita and let's look at that inviting <laughs> landscape. I think that would be a great idea. I would I would tune in for that. <laughs> Uh, oh, and by the way, you know, I have, I re I bought a couple of um, full-length mirrors. I mean, and as you can see, I have a long, a big one in the bag. Um, I, I've, this is my disclaimer. I have a designer who designs my home and my spaces because I have no sense of style about that. It's it looks not good behind you. <laughs> well, it's behind me, but that wasn't me. That that was not me, guys. I, I spent the money. It was really worth the money to... Mm. Have someone else come in and think about that because he does things that I will never think to do. It's like it's beyond my comprehension. It's like, oh no, yeah. you know. And he makes it beautiful. Um, and of course, he wants to kill me because I've changed a couple of things. And he's every time he comes in, he's like, "What have you done to my design?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he, but he got like that long, that big mirror in the back, which is cool. It's sort of like. It looks good, even it's eclectic and it, it's totally different. But we also got like some IKEA mirrors, the full length. They're they're a little expensive. They're a hundred dollars. I but I will tell you that I think that's a great idea, and I'm sorry to to interrupt you. Okay. Can I just tell everybody if you can get to an IKEA and get those mirrors, it is for me in my experience the least expensive, very good quality mirrors that you can find on the market. And they're not something that you can get from Amazon or Overstock and have shipped to you readily. Um, I don't believe that IKEA even ships them, but most of us, you know, are within some proximity of an IKEA, even if it's quite a drive. Um, that those I, I've researched, and the only place I've ever found decent ones for less has been on Craigslist, and that's completely hit or miss. So I'm glad to hear you mention that. That's one few of the one of the few IKEA things that I'm really a fan of. Oh, that's good. That's good. All mm -hmm. right, so, you know, you and I can just talk about interior design and everything until we're blue in the face. So let's move on with the deck because we're... <laughs> yes, we'll, we'll carry on. Um, so we'll, we'll move on from evoking, but I just want to say as we, as we kind of leave that evoking feeling um, and that practice, the other thing I would mention is if there's a word that really resonates for you, um, perhaps it's peace, uh, it might be adventure, it could be, you know, a word or a couple words like world travel, um, whatever you're trying to convey to your guest that you really want them to understand and feel good in, write it down, um, maybe put it on a chalkboard wall and actually write it at the top. Um, you could do those big block letters that sometimes we find at Marshalls or Home Goods or we can order online and put peace up across the wall in your listing. It not only photographs really well and gets people excited to book your listing, um, but it reminds you when you're in that space, oh, that's right, this is my theme word, this is what I want to evoke here. And um, and that's a powerful practice that really manifests some some big deals. So That's beautiful, Al. That's that's really nice. I love I love that idea. Just to for the for the space itself to have a theme and a word. Yeah. That, yeah. And also that's the kind of guest you want to bring into your home. Right. Right. That's true. That's actually it's it's really that we're we're almost um you know, we're marketers, we're micro entrepreneurs, we're people who are out there looking for our clients, so to speak. And um, we want those guests to be respectful and, and loving of our space and to really vibe on what we've spent time and money on. So, yeah. Okay, so we'll move on to the sensory experience, um, which is really the five or arguably six senses um, that we bring and experience when we come into a space, whether it's our own or another host's. And I think for most of us, that first sense is sight. And this close second and the one most tightly wired in our brains is smell. And um, when I was traveling recently, I stayed in an Airbnb, of course, and the smell of the place was notable. And there was no way for me to have known that before I booked it. And it was kind of discouraging, and I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings, um, but it was one of those things that you probably want to be aware of if you are the host. So the couple things that I would say is if you have, um, you know, the smell of cookies baking, which most of us aren't able to pull off, but there are a few hosts out there that are doing that, or the smell of bleach, 
or if you're um, looking for kind of a shortcut, which is totally fine, that's what I do, um, get some plugins, uh, the Glade plugins or whichever brand you prefer, or a diffuser and put them in the warmest spaces of your home or apartment. Um, if they're by a heat register, if they're by a window that gets a lot of light, if they're in the bathroom, if that contains a lot of heat, um, those are the best spots. It'll give you the most bang for your buck. And be aware that, you know, if, if your neighbors are cooking food, if you have, um, you know, somebody who comes with a pet, really stay on top of that smell factor because that conveys a lot to your guests. Um, and it can be decoratively incorporated pretty easily, especially if it's diffusers. So that's one of those things. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm scent sensitive. Mm. Um, so so I'm, everything that I get at home, even detergent doesn't have any scent because it just really bothers me, bothers my allergies. Mm -hmm. And I've actually had guests tell me about that they have allergies that are really strong with scents and I'm like, look, I don't clean with any scent or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I do like um, what I, my neighbors work, I think she works for Martha Stewart, some sort of company like that, and they gave me linen scent. Oh, okay. So it's so like it's the only scent that it, they gave me a candle. I don't even turn it. I don't even light it because it's enough. This the scent, mm -hmm. um, and those little sticks with the oil in the bottom. Yes. So it doesn't give you like a big thing, but it's just just a little hint of smell without being overpowering. Yeah. I and mean, also, you have sometimes guests that are have a little bit way too much perfume on, and you know. <laughs> That does happen. That absolutely happens. Um, Mary Corn Cornell is saying um, that she's purchased a Hamilton Beach True Air carbon filter, which functions as a nightlight. And thank you for that share. I really think that's a great idea. I don't have one of those, and I don't think that I've I've come across one. My mom has um, one of those things that sprays out into the room on some sort of timer, which I think is just hilarious. Um, but it actually works really, really well. So if it's in a non-obtrusive place and it's in a really light linen scent, like you're saying, um, it can work. It just matters, you know, what your space looks like because in, in my tiny apartment, it wouldn't work. But for her, it does. So, yeah. And, and John is saying a lot of health-conscious folks prefer scent-free. I should probably mention that in the listing. Yeah, I mean, look, there, there's. I have received requests where either they're allergic to pets or they're allergic to scents. I mean, and if that's, and I know of a host here in Brooklyn, she's been hosting forever, uh, I stalked her for a while, and <laughs> one of her marketings is they're very organic, they only use organic products, they're very um, natural and clean, they don't even have Wi-Fi, hmm. they, because of, the, because of the, the waves and everything else, you get internet, but it's wired. Okay. So, you know, just, just to let people know that if you have sensitivities of, of smells or things like that, that could be a fantastic marketing point for your listing because it's like we're either organic or we're scent free, we don't have any scents in the house and we yeah. prefer it that way so like that you also tell your guests please do not bathe yourself in cologne. Yeah, I mean, and, and some places that is necessary. And I, I really appreciate that you brought that up. And Sue is making a good point. She says, clean places do not smell. I'd mm. never use air fresheners. They aren't, they aren't organic. And I really like that point. Clean places, and we're going to touch on clean, so we'll do it now. Um, clean is part of good design. Cleanliness, the smell, everything we're talking about right now. There are so many guests out there who will not notice these details. And then there's a handful of us as guests who absolutely do. And so to Sue's point, if you're keeping a really clean place or if you have a sidekick of sorts or an assistant or a cleaning lady or whomever it is, a kid um, who's taking care of those details for you, hold them to a high standard. Hold yourself to a high standard because it makes your life easier and every guest experience is better for that. So that was a good point, Susan. Sue. Um, one other thing that I wanted to mention is touch as we're going through the sensory experience and this one is a little more relatable specifically to interior design. Um, we spend out a lot of money as hosts even when we're trying not to. Um, it's my privilege now as a host to be able to spend out a little bit more than I had at the beginning. But at the beginning everything I had was collected from Craigslist, freebies, secondhand things that were in good shape, um, linens that I had sort of 
salvaged or collected from somebody. And um, as I've been a host a little bit longer and been in some places, I will say invest in good linens um, because you're just going to end up replacing them if they don't hold up well to washing and bleaching. And Evelyn, you and I have talked about that, a couple brands that we like. Um, I like Calvin Klein for sheets. I like Martex for towels. Um, they're a hospitality line, but you can find them on um, Amazon. And they've held up beautifully for me for years. Uh, what else do you like? Did we talk about restoration hardware, maybe? Um, yeah, I have some restoration hardware, but those are from when they were my only sheets. They were my personal mm -hmm. sheets, and not for gas, and, and they've, they've lasted like about eight, nine years. Um, for gas, I tend to buy Target, the Threshold brand, and they're, they're pretty good. I like their double, um, they have a double corner. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying out some Costco brands. It's just you know how it is. Um, sheets, they and towels, they just get a beating. Yeah, they they really do, and and that's fine. Everything that I have, and and I've read this on some of the forums, um, everything that I have is white for the most part, and then some smaller things like hand towels that are in a blue that I'm able to sort of camouflage when they're really you know needing. Um, to be cleaned well, but I find that the the best thing to do is to get sheet set that have a small print on them, and I can't remember who it was. One of the hosts shared this on the forum, saying that they're basically white or ivory, but with a, a nice detailed polka dot or some sort of motif, so that it just breaks up the eye a little bit, and it gives you a fighting chance to hold on to those linens a lot longer, which has worked beautifully for me. Um, so in that touch um, sensory experience vein, the other thing I would say is if you can afford it or can find a way to get a hold of some things, whether it's Craigslist or whatever you have in your local area, get some actual wood furniture, even if it's just one piece that's a table or maybe you put a bench at the end of the bed, um, something that isn't made of particle board which is kind of a big ask for some of us because it is a lot of money and I wouldn't have been able to afford that at the beginning. Um, but, you know, just put it out into the universe, so to speak, and let your friends and family know that you need something, and it will show up in a short amount of time. That really adds a lot of polish to the space. And the other thing I would say regarding touch is try not to use plastic. Um, most of the places that I've stayed at and have enjoyed the most, and frankly have photographed the best as I've looked at listings, use metal and wood and even paper products or rattan versus plastic. Um, and we use a lot of plastic in our kitchens, um, for trash cans, we use it in the bathroom. Sometimes it's what's covering the shelving units that we're using. All of that takes away polish from the ultimate experience for your guest. I'm not a hater of IKEA. I think that they actually serve us really well as hosts because a lot of it's so affordable. But don't go overboard. You know, balance it out with something that you've found somewhere, uh, maybe one vintage piece or something that you've salvaged. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think I think that's a great great um, recommendation. It's like I know that at the beginning we could only probably afford IKEA, but as we keep getting more business and everything else, it's just start changing some pieces. Mm -hmm. And and believe me, I'm the same. I'm even with just hangers. I don't get wire or plastic hangers. I just did the oh. investment. I spent like twenty dollars on some really good hangers. And they just last, and they just give you that extra plush feeling when you open the closet, and the pretty hangers. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I totally agree with you on that. It's something that we, we, we maybe can't start out doing, um, but it's pretty easy to put that as one little goal, touch on our theme word for our space, and say, yeah, that's quality. That's, that's more polish that my guests can experience. Um, I think that's really important. And then one other thing that I'll mention is sort of an intuitive energy when you come into a space. And I don't want to get too woo-woo with everybody who's like, just tell us the design. Um, but what I'm feeling is that so often when I walk into a space, if it's not balanced, um, for example, all the furniture that's really large and cumbersome is on one side of the room, or maybe there's a lot of rugs down in the house, but in this particular space, there's nothing on the floor. Whatever it is that sort of speaks to you unconsciously is really something to be aware of. So when you come into a space, give yourself the opportunity to be the guest, to look through their eyes, or if you're having a tough time with that, and some of us do, have a friend who's really honest come visit you 
and give them a literal tour of what you've done as a host and what your space looks like because they can weigh in and be honest with you and say your headboard looks really cheap I think that you should reupholster it or I think that you need some window dressings because this looks really stark and those are pretty pretty important bits of feedback that a lot of us aren't getting unless we put it out there that we really want to hear it very good so um, do you want me to move on to the next slide I love wow factor we can talk about wow factor. <laughs> <laughs> that one's fun. Um, so this category is probably why a lot of us are even here today um, talking about interior design. The slide that you're looking at is uh, one of my spaces and it's hand painted. I will not tell you the um, amount of time that I spent trying to draw that out just right on the wall, but it turned out great. So I'm really, I'm really pleased with that. Um, part of the reason that I did that was because I really wanted to have something that would photograph well, um, that guests could get excited about. It's not going to appeal to everybody, um, but it's, it's authentic to me as a host and who I am as a decorator. And uh, once, it, once it went up, I was really you know, pleased with the outcome. So another thing that anybody, you know, really, you don't have to be a DIYer, you don't have to have a big budget, um, but you can get together with either one other host in your area or go to your yard sale, you know, go on Craigslist, whatever appeals to you, and find a way to make a statement in a space that you think a guest will feel is important. So, for example, if you know a lot of the guests you're getting are coming for business reasons, you know, they're maybe you're close to a convention center of sorts um, or a university, whatever it might be. If you find that they're coming for work and they really need to know how is the Wi-Fi, is your Wi-Fi fast, that's a good tip off, um, design a really wonderful workspace for them. Have a couple of chairs, have nice chairs for them to work in if they were working an eight hour day at a desk. Um, make sure there's a lot of extra cords and outlets um, and also do maybe an art wall that's at that desk space so it can be a multitude of frames that kind of tell a story it could be a chalkboard wall um, that has you know a place for them to write down notes or an inspirational quote um, there's some wonderful websites that do very blown up uh, vinyl decals that go up on a wall even if it's a rental and come right back down and that could be a quote it could be a, a blowing tree there's so many different things and that really goes back to not only wow factor but the theme word that's important to you about your space have you seen those decals Evelyn I have seen them um, and I do have a chalkboard on my space in one of my listings I have a, a chalkboard and <laughs> the designer have written something really pretty and welcome in different languages and a guest erased it <laughs> 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 and they and they did like a, a drawing of the Statue of Liberty um, and I've been lazy about like wanting to probably give people like a little of some chalks and for them to to leave a message and I could take a photo and that could become my guest book or or mm -hmm. something like that yeah yeah I love that and actually you made a good point that um, once you you know empower the guests to do that it really does become a piece of living art chalkboard paint is not difficult to do it's just a matter of putting up coats of it and letting it dry thoroughly in between and then adding another coat and another coat which is really not not complicated we can all manage that and we can find somebody who can do it if, if we don't have the time um, but I'll say to that point we at my house here have a chalkboard wall in our kitchen um, for any of you following me on Instagram it's on there and if you're not following me please do um, and we had a little incident where coffee may have landed on that wall um, because we were coming going through the door and it really kind of ruined the the signatures and little handprints and the little notes that everybody had left but we decided okay how can we use that in a good way and we decided we would erase it all at the end of each year or whenever it became necessary and we would take a photo of it erase it and then start again 
and that's going to become such a wonderful collection, you know, in in even a few months or a couple years, to be able to bind that into a book and leave it for your guests, for example. We can print those out online so easily and create whatever we want. Um, I think that would be a really powerful practice. And then, you know, a couple of the other wow factor ideas, other than you know maybe putting up a mural. Um, you could also do sort of a spa bathroom. It doesn't have to be a wall. We don't have to go vertical on everything. Um, if you do sort of a spa bathroom, you can choose the color accordingly, pick some great linens, um, make sure that the toiletries are well stocked and something that will appeal and, and really look beautiful like a hotel bathroom might or, or an editorial on what a spa looks like. You don't have to go overboard and do every room to that degree, but decide what resonates with you and then do it well. Thank you, Elle. Um, let me, let's, you want us to move on to our quality versus quantity. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, um, this is a little more of the nitty gritty of it. And hopefully this will be, you know, useful to, to a lot of you. I have a lot of notes on that, so I'll, I'm going to look down a little bit as I, as I pick out a couple things because I know we're at the end of our time shortly. Um, I mentioned earlier that when we have a lot of things around, they don't always translate a good story or a clear story to our guests. Um, you know, again, because the guests are not the ones who've collected that, but many of us are sort of anthropologists. We love to come into somebody's space and see what they have and what they're about, and it's really a privilege for us as guests to come into those places because you're being intimate, you're allowing us in. So the photo that's up, for example, is actually in um, one of my listings, and they're pieces that I've collected that my partner says are all very Southwestern or Santa Fe looking. And I interpret them as being more travel oriented as a whole um, because each of those things has shown up from some place that I've been in the world and um, a couple are gifts. So whatever it is that you feel makes a good collection or a good statement together, group them together, make a curiosity cabinet, um, get all of the owls that you love or you know the textiles, whatever it might be, put them into one containment unit. That could be a bookshelf, that could be the top of a console like this photo reflects. Um, it could be a very small cabinet or a portion of, of a shelf or bedside table. It doesn't have to be big, but it does need to be reeled in, I think is a good way to put it. So that's one thing. Um, another thing would be to showcase a few special things. So some of us are familiar with shadow boxes. Um, if there's some guys out there, John, you're out there, um, you know, you've caught a baseball at a really interesting game, and that's local. And that's going to be something that somebody coming through is going to be interested in seeing or knowing the story of. Put that ball in a shadow box and put it up on the wall or a shelf somewhere and put a little note with it what the story is on it because that adds value and it's still special to you. You can still showcase it. Mm. That, that's a great idea. Now, let me ask you a question, Al. In reference of collections, do you ever worry that a guest might break something? Um, because I tend to have anything that is of importance to me. I don't have it in the guest space, just so like that it breaks. I'm not going to hate them too much. Uh, yeah, I totally understand that. That's a really good point. I thought you were maybe going to ask if somebody would sort of, you know, if things would disappear sometimes, but bre breaking is certainly an issue too. Um, my answer to that is probably twofold. One, in the vetting process, when we're talking with guests, we usually know, you know, what we're getting. Um, but accidents happen, and, and sometimes things are unpredictable. We certainly know that. So my other answer would be go vertical. Um, I love seeing shelves that are up really high <laughs> because it puts things out of reach but it puts them on display and it doesn't have to be a deep shelf. Um, it could be over a door, it could be over a set of windows where you know you have a couple plants up there that need the light but then you also have something special to you that they can see at a distance but they're not going to go up and get. Um, there was another property that I had a, a salvaged library ladder um, and I don't, I, I'm going to say on the record, I don't recommend getting ladders in your listings, um, but I did have one and nobody got hurt, but it allowed for this sort of visual climb up to this one shelf. And on that shelf were some really special books and, and doodads. And I think it worked really well for that particular space. So there's usually an answer. That must have been beautiful. Yeah. 
it was a long time ago. <laughs> um, so I know we're kind of winding down. How are we doing on time? Yes, we, we're almost done. Um, I, there's something going on with the chat that the chat is not popping up again. Darn technical issues. Um, but you wanted to talk also about minimalistic and scarcity and things like that, or did we, did we talk about that already? Yeah, we did. We talked about um, you know that minimalism can be gorgeous, and it also just needs to be committed and not to be mistaken for scarcity. Um, so I guess on that point, I would say be brave and put out into the world what it is you actually want your space to look like, even if you don't feel it's within your budget or you're not sure how you're going to get an entire armoire moved into this space or whatever it might be. Um, you know, really put together an inspiration board or a Pinterest board in the world we live in now. Um, I still work with a lot of paper. I do 90% on the computer, but when it comes to designing a space or really getting a feel for something I want, rip up some magazines and draw some pictures and sketch out a terrible blueprint of the room because most of us are not very good at that, or at least I'm not, um, and really get a sense of what you want it to be and do your best to get there in steps. It doesn't have to happen at once. Ask people for what you need. Ask for recommendations on resources, and you will be really surprised. It can happen in just a couple months, and it will be exactly what you hoped it to be. I totally agree with you. I believe I believe in that which you um, manifest you will create. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I am having a little problem of not seeing people's comments on the chat, and I'm sorry about that. I just see the last comment I have is, Chrissy, I try not to clutter up the space too much. Um, mm -hmm. So, host, if we could do a couple of Q and A's um, for L, we we're about to finish, and you know, we're it's already 2:41, and it is Saturday. Yes, we have we we all I'm sure want to go and do something super fun, or we've had brunch, or we're on our way to brunch, or whatever. <laughs> Or we need to read a book or something fun. <laughs> <laughs> or we need to clean for the guest. Or yes. we need to do that. I hate to say, but there's probably a lot of us doing that today. I know. My guest just left this morning, and actually um, she fell on the ice. <laughs> oh, that, we're struggling with that here, too. I, is she okay? Yeah, she's fine. Um, I was still in bed, and when she left, and, and she sent me a text, she's like, oh, the keys are away, and, you know, I fell on the ice, and I was like, sorry about oh. that. <laughs> oh, it's okay. okay. <laughs> you know. We're almost there, everybody. Everybody who doesn't know, it's daylight savings time. Is it tonight, right, technically, like overnight? Yes, yeah, yeah, I think it's like, yeah, so when we wake up in the morning. It'll be a new day, a new season. That's so exciting. It's a good time of change. All right, so I don't see any questions. Um, um, Sue is getting off to go see UConn basketball game. Yay, hey, go oh. UConn. All right, Sue, I love that. And Chris is saying uh, that she loves Pinterest. I love Pinterest as well. I actually use it a lot for ideas. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. I actually, I, I totally agree with you. I find there are so many creative, talented people out there who have spent their own time to put together an amazing board. I really don't have to do that myself. I can follow a lot of amazing people. Yeah, um, and actually, you know, I, I just did construction on a bathroom here in my house, uh, one of the bathrooms, and it was huge, the Pinterest. It was sort of like just getting ideas and what kind of tiles and what kind of look and feel and and I used it with a designer, and he was like, okay, we're going to go this way. You know, you already kind of gave me some clues of what you wanted to do. So it was great. I, I really do use Pinterest quite a lot. Yeah. Um, so we have a question from Corinne. She's saying, as an Airbnb guest, um, what is the most inspiring, unique design piece that you have seen? Oh, that's great. Ah, oh, that's great. What a good question. Hmm. There was a listing that I stayed in um, in New York, and it was um, it was a really lovely living room, kind of a strange shape. And what they had done was taken um, really big pallets, you know, the the warehouse pallets that you might use a forklift to pick up stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, they had salvaged two of those 
And that's more common now than it was when I had seen it. So that was really a fresh, cool idea. And they had just placed them vertically on the wall in the living room, kind of behind the couch area. The wood grain was beautiful. They were local. Um, they had clearly been actually used for many years, or at least as long as palettes last. And it was just really cool to come into a space that was like, yeah, we're going to take what other people might think is garbage or utilitarian, and we're going to make it a piece of art. Um, that was actually really memorable to me. Mm, nice. That's, that's, that's great. We have another question, and this was sent uh, by Susan via email. Um, and she says, uh, what's your take on decorating for the masses and also any small space tips? Oh, great. Two great questions. Um, so decorating for the masses, that's an interesting point. My inclination is to say, um, decorator, know thyself and do what you love and that will resonate with people who are going to be the kind of guests that you want and the people that you want to interact with. You know, the, the guests we have kind of become our tribe um, of travelers around the world. But if you really have a place that you need to appeal to a wide range of people, um, especially for income reasons, I would say keep it very clean and then balance hard and soft with each other. So an example of that would be if you're going to get a very tight back streamlined couch, for example, or the headboard is wood and everything is hard edged, make sure you soften it up with a handful of baskets in the space, um, fold some, some blankets on a bookshelf, really lighten up that hard feel. Um, for some of us, including myself, I use an IKEA shelf as a room divider in one of my listings and I filled it with soft, groovy little vignettes of you know, resined bugs and, and cookie jars and different things that within that context don't get too crazy, but they soften the hard line of that space. Um, try to tell a story, I think. Choose whatever story you want to tell, and the masses really appreciates being brought into your story. Very good. Thank you. Um, yeah, and then the other question was about small spaces, um, which we all know in these urban settings. What do you think about that one, Evelyn? Do you have any small space tip? Oh my God, um, I used to live in an apartment that um, it was so small you needed to step outside to change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, well, it was one of those New York studio apartments. I lived in Manhattan, and it was super tiny, and I used, you mentioned it, it was like above the the doors. Mm -hmm. I built shelving uh, in the bathrooms to put the towels and linens and things like that. So mm -hmm. anything above any door was like storage space for me. Yeah, I love that. That's a great answer. I love that. Yeah, yeah. and I have a tiny bathroom, which guests have complained, and thankfully that was the bathroom that I made bigger. Um, and because it is my property, my home, I was actually, one of the things we added, I added to the bathroom was a skylight. Ah, yay. It's, it's, I love the skylight. Mm -hmm. I wish the entire bathroom had a whole skylight, but it is one of my best things that, that I love it. Um, you know, so, so yes, that, um, if you can. Yeah. If you don't have someone above you and it is your home and all that other stuff, I think a skylight was such a great investment. Great. I love hearing that. And not all of us can do that because we either have rentals or we have a budget or whatever it might be. But to your point, I love that you brought in more natural light, um, that you made something that's important to you a priority and you figured out how to make it happen. That's really great. Can totally be done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So um, I think, let me see if there's any, I love that the coach Bryce is telling our story. I love that. Um, I think we are actually going to be wrapping this up, guys. It's almost, you know, we've been at it for almost an hour. We have so much more to talk about. So come and find us um, on Evelyn's website. Please come and find me at alhome.com. Um, I've been doing life coaching for a long time, and I've been doing decorating even longer, and I've been partnered with Airbnb hosts all around the United States and a few even beyond. Um, so please reach out to me. I'm really excited to work with you if you want to do any one-on-one -on -one consultations um, and, and just, you know, to troubleshoot because my quote, my, my, uh, my big saying all the time is there is always a solution, and that carries over to our lives and, and to our lives as hosts. Yeah, and, and one question, L. I mean, is it possible that they could hire you and you could do um, Skype consultations or anything like that? Is that feasible? Yeah. So I, 
I, I, that is what I do um, for the most part. Um, that's a good point. Most of the most of the hosts and most of the clients I have, I work with via Skype. Um, I have a pretty tight system for how we do that. It's been extremely successful. So if you're interested in doing that, we can set up a time frame. We can set up a small package, whatever you want to do. Um, but just start by reaching out to me, and we'll have a conversation about it and see where you're at in the process and how I can support you in that. Thank you so much, Elle. And and like always, dear host, please be on the lookout. I'm actually going to be sending out a survey soon that will love your answers. I really do. I want to tell you I appreciate you and value you. And and really, it's it's an honor to provide any information and any knowledge that we have and share it with you. Um, April's webinar, we haven't. I have not decided yet. I'm trying to get. Um, it might either be legal webinar or it might be one about the insider tips of Airbnb. Airbnb is coming out with a bunch of different things that I don't know if you're aware of. Um, so, and there's other hosts that have little secrets that they know about. Oh, if you do this, and this is what this other thing means. Um, information, you know, it's like the insider information of Airbnb. Um, so that might be April's webinar, so keep be on the lookout for the newsletter, and I will announce it there. But thank you, guys. And Jorge, my guy, you're like one of the sole guys on, on the group because it tends to be female. <laughs> love! Uh, but we always love, you know, having a guy um, here and there talking to us. So thank you so much, Elle. Everybody have a fantastic Saturday, and we will see you again soon. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Happy weekend. All right, bye-bye.